I was born and raised in New York City in the 70s when uh, New York was super scary and dangerous and it was tough for a little white boy to be in New York growing up but it was also a really great time and um, uh, I grew up right down the street from Rocksteady Park so um, I was lucky enough to sort of be adopted by some of those early uh, breakdance crews and graffiti writers, uh, TC5, uh, Doc and Beam, those guys basically, Doe's kind of like mentored me in my little graffiti endeavors. So a lot of the older guys would have me like do them little drawings or characters. And um, then they demanded I get a skateboard. So I started borrowing their skateboards and then I finally broke down and got my own skateboard and you know, got pretty good at that and I was, uh, a uh, little skateboard graffiti writer running around the city skateboarding and doing tags and through there I got to go meet all the old school 1980s era skaters in uh, New York um, down at Dream Wheels in Washington Square Park and uh, uh, then I got kind of like uh, you know good at skating and writing graffiti and making a mess and uh, got sponsored and came out to California. So all my friends, uh, Rodney Smith and uh, Bruno Musso specifically, started like their first skateboard company out of New York City called Shut Skateboards. And I drew the original Shut logo and a couple of uh, the original assault vehicle skateboard and a bunch of other things. And then I think it kind of got misconstrued through everybody that I somehow knew something about clothes because I knew Sean and I skated for him. So um, through a friend of mine, Dominic Trenier, me and Ollie and Paul got offered the chance to go and start a streetwear line with Russell Simmons. It was originally called Fat Fashions because fat was the line everyone was saying at the time. And me and Ollie were like on some other like, we need to make it more like North Face. And, but he wasn't having it. Russell didn't know what he was doing. He wanted jail suits, like Naughty by Nature. And we were like, no, it's gotta be like Polo and Nautica and like North Face. And then it was like, we had to use the word fat. We were like, fat's stupid. No one's gonna be saying fat in five years. And his response, no one says deaf anymore, but I still got Def Jam. I can't argue with that, right? So we were like, okay, fat, uh, Polo, blah, 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 fat farm. There you go. So that's how that happened. So. My friend who started uh, Shut, Rodney Smith, it Shut went out of business and he was having a really hard time. And he was like, came to me and said like, look, I wanna take the Zoo York name because I think it's really great and make a skateboard company out of it. And like, obviously I knew all the Zoo York skaters and that's kind of where I come from. So we were like, all right, well that sounds cool. And you know, did you get the permission to use it from the bosses? And he actually went and contacted Ali uh, Mark Edmonds, who's the president of Zoo York Graffiti Crew, skateboard crew, and uh, asked him for permission and he gave us his blessing. He said, fine, go for it. I kind of worked at Fat Farm and started Zoo York and I'd work at Fat Farm all day and like intentionally be the hard worker guy. So like everyone would be like, yeah, it's six, seven, I'm out of here. And I'd be like, all right, bye, I gotta do more Fat Farm work. Beep, boop, beep, like, come over, they're gone. And then we'd, like, use all the Fat Farm equipment because it was expensive. You know, like, uh, a Quadra 950 with the RAM and the printing. I mean, it was, like, $30,000 back then. We couldn't afford that. So we'd stay up all night to, like, 1 in the morning doing Zoo York skateboard graphics and T-shirt graphics. And then the whole thing happened with Gus Van Zant came out of nowhere, and they wanted to make, uh, you know, Larry, give Larry the chance to make a movie. And then we all got together and made kids, and everybody who was skating for Zoo was in kids, and, you know, it was a whole big... It was just like this perfect storm of stuff that was happening in New York that kind of like pushed us over the edge. You know, kids ended up being the biggest ad in the whole world for a zoo and it blew up and I did all the graphics, all the skateboards, all the ads, all the tees, everything, all the catalogs. I was the one man show and I was like a tyrant. Skateboarding like is colorblind, you know, it's like we in my documentary we talk about this how like you go to high schools at least back in like the 80s and the 90s and like you know there would be like the Asians sitting together and the blacks sitting together and the whites sitting together and then the skateboarders sitting together because the skateboarders were just on their own thing and it's like you can have a crazy skater like Tony Torillo who's like on some like heavy metal craze shit hanging out with Stevie Williams they could go on tour together and like totally have a good time and skate and, and be like you know uh 
you know, friends, and that's rare to find. You know, like uh, you don't find like a like a country music listening white basketball player, for example. You know. <laughs> You know, you don't. That's just, you know, that's what, that's the great thing about skateboarding. Hey, this is Eli Morgan Gesner, and you are now tuned to Karma Loop TV.